Have you ever wondered, while watching RuPaul's Drag Race, how it intertwines with the values we hold dear in our community? Welcome, it's Laura here, ready to examine this glittering spectacle beneath the surface. We're going to scrutinize the competitive culture, the humor, and the narratives it promotes, and propose ways we could do better. RuPaul's Drag Race, a beacon of drag in mainstream media, undoubtedly comes with its share of criticism. One aspect that comes under scrutiny is the competitive nature of the show. It's true competition can spur performers to excel, but when does it start to eclipse the spirit of community? When the quest to be America's next drag superstar incites tension and conflict, the line between performance and reality starts to blur, subtly promoting a less empathetic way of interacting within our community. Next, let's talk about humor. The show is a treasure trove of wit and banter. However, when the jokes become jabs, we must stop and reflect. Comedy in drag is an art, but it must uplift, not undermine. By fostering humor that honors everyone's dignity, we can build a culture of inclusivity and kindness where hilarity and respect coexist. Another issue lies in the show's emphasis on personal drama. While personal growth and conflict can be engaging for viewers, tying one's worth to overcoming adversity can be restrictive. We need to celebrate narratives that also spotlight cooperation, mutual support, and collective triumphs, irrespective of their magnitude. Lastly, we must recognize the power of representation. RuPaul's Drag Race has broken barriers, bringing drag culture to a vast audience. But as we progress, we must ensure the representations on such platforms truly reflect the diversity and complexity of our community. We must strive for content that not only entertains but also enriches, educates and empathizes. To summarize, RuPaul's Drag Race has significantly contributed to the visibility and acceptance of drag. However, we must also strive for a culture that values every individual, celebrates our shared humanity, and nurtures a community where everyone is encouraged to flourish. Thanks for joining me on this journey today. Let's continue this dialogue for a world where drag is not just seen, but deeply felt in all its transformative power. Let's take a moment to clarify something crucial. Drag, cross-dressing, and being transgender are distinct from each other, each with their unique characteristics and implications. Drag, as we've explored today, is a form of performance art, not an identity. It's about expression, theatrics, and often, a celebration of femininity. On the other hand, cross-dressing refers to the act of wearing clothes traditionally associated with the opposite gender. It doesn't necessarily imply anything about one's gender identity. It can be a personal choice, a means of expression, or simply a comfort thing. Being transgender, however, is about an individual's personal understanding of their gender identity. It involves a deep sense of self that may not align with the sex assigned at birth. Misunderstanding and conflating these terms can lead to harmful stereotypes and incite hatred. So as we continue to enjoy and appreciate the artistry of drag, let's also strive for understanding and respect for all and challenge outdated attempts to poke fun at people. This is a part of our journey towards a more inclusive and empathetic world.